should form a club, a brotherhood. We change the world through the power of art. Music, poetry. And what about Tolkien? I want to write something. I didn't know much about um, Tolkien's upbringing, so to get to see that, you know, played by you on screen was really interesting. For you coming in, kind of, what impacted you most, or what did you find to be the most interesting about those early years? I was in the same boat as you. I really knew nothing about the man behind these stories. I was a fan, so I came into it being like, oh, I love The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings and all these things. And then and then reading the script for the first time, I was like, wow, this this man had lived an incredible life and learning about these these friendships and, and, um, and the love of his life. Um, and, and his passions, I was like, wow, this is fascinating. So um, just an exciting prospect to then bring that to the screen for, for people to learn more about him. Love the idea with this, you know, secret society that he had mm. the, the fellowship, the camaraderie to push each other, but then also that they identified their passions so young. You've been acting a long time. When did you know this is something that I want to spend the rest of my life doing? I don't know, it was something that I always really enjoyed from a young age, but it was kind of one of those hobbies that you keep doing and then, and then was fortunate to get a few little breaks along the way, but then I was also very aware of that kind of element of um, being a child actor can can uh, be difficult to transition into keeping doing it as an adult. So uh, I loved doing it, but was also weary of it in a way because I was like, ah, the chances are I don't get to do it as an adult. So I kind of kind of kept this <laughs> love of it, but also kind of yeah tried to keep it at, at arm's length in some regards. Where I was like, okay. Um, the reality is that it might not work out, so I feel very lucky to, to still be doing it. We see in his relationship with Edith mm. um, that she inspired much of you know what he had written and, and a lot of his childhood did and places that he had been um, and the spark of the imagination. Did the linguistic side come easy to you? Did you identify with creative, imaginative play? I, I mean, the language wasn't, uh, the languages aren't my strong point. <laughs> um, I got a, a C in GCSE French, French. <laughs> And that was like a multiple choice questionnaire. So I, I, it's safe to say that I'm not, not great with languages. But at the same time, with this, we were lucky to, to work with a professor at Oxford who kind of developed new languages and with these kind of Nordic and Anglo-Saxon influences. Um, but essentially, I'd have to learn them kind of phonetically um, and then just listen to them over and over again and then, and then kind of repeat and then parrot and then, and then learn the meaning behind them again to, to make it work in the film. The kind of mantra that there was, the Hellheimer, right? See yeah. the day and um, this idea of getting a little bit pushed out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Is there somebody in your life that pushes you out of your comfort zone? I think hopefully whenever you're on set, there should be someone who's pushing you, whether it's the person you're doing the scene with or whether it's the director or, or someone else on set who's just saying, give that a try. Or it can be a, a simple thing. Sometimes it's the camera operator because they're the people that are closest to you and kind of instant feedback. And yeah. you kind of develop a shorthand way of communicating with them. So it's like, it's this thing whereby, you know, you've got to kind of push it and then not be scared to fail because it will go wrong sometimes and things won't work. but. Um, even if you make a fool of yourself, hopefully there'll be something in there that within the edit of the film makes sense or works for the character.